you know, Geetika, this podcast almost didn't happen. Why? You remember I called you up in the morning. I was hoping that you would say that, you know, let's shift this because I really didn't want to shoot it so early in the morning. <laughs> Just wanted to be a little lazy, sit a little more, watch one more Netflix show. That's what. <laughs> you know, I called you five minutes before leaving. Yeah. I wanted to do the same thing. Oh, no. <laughs> That's why accountability really matters because you know there is someone to really push us and pull us along. Absolutely. Yeah. And that actually is what we are going to talk about today. No, not accountability, about comfort zones. Hi, I'm Sheila. And I'm Geetika. Intro, please. Hi there. You're listening to Spirituality Sideshow, where the weird meets the wonderful. Hit it. So, uh, talking about Netflix, there was a show that I was watching on. Hot star. Hot star, right? Yeah. We have to promote all of them. <laughs> no, I think our viewer thinks that's all we do all day, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was watching the show on Hot Star. I think it was called Single Drug Female. I don't mm-hmm. know. It's about a recovering alcoholic who's hosting a huge party and then she doesn't want to go out. She's hiding because, you know, there's a lot of temptation to mm-hmm. get into, yeah. uh, to drinking, going in. And she really didn't want to go back into that environment. And she's hiding inside a closet where a sponsor finds her. And a sponsor tells her, they're calling you, go out and mingle. And she says, no, there's nothing good out there. And her sponsor says something which was really very insightful. And that is, there's nothing good here either. And that's exactly what happens when we stay in our comfort zones. Now, you know what comfort zones are. People think comfort zones are those places where we are safe. Yes, you are safe. But... It is not necessarily nice. True. Because fighting with your spouse can be a comfort zone. Arguments about money can be a comfort zone. Mm -hmm. Every day driving to office with complete road rage, yelling, Mm -hmm. shouting, showing fingers Mm -hmm. to people, that is also a comfort zone. Stress is a comfort zone. Yeah. Now, the thing is, um, why are these comfort zones? Because your brain knows how to react your mind knows how you will behave and how it has to react and that makes it feel safe but you know there was this story that i was reading Mm -hmm. about this guy who was a very unhappy person throughout his life he always found things to be irritated about and always yelled at his wife always you know crying gripping and all that and uh, but his wife really was very nice woman Mm -hmm. so when he was on his deathbed he was in the hospital and his wife was constantly there present with him Mm -hmm. taking care of him and on the deathbed he realized that i've been so bad to my wife i've been so ungrateful to the world i've been so bad to the people and what if my whole life was wrong Mm -hmm. and within two seconds he passes away Wow. Imagine if that is, if you have to die with that regret. Yes. My God, life will be so horrible. Maybe he, thank God he passed away because it would have been so hard to live with that regret. Once you're, once you're dead anyway, there's no more living. So, so, <laughs> so yeah. It really doesn't matter. But that's exactly the topic of the book, five, The Five Regrets of yeah, Dying, dying people. people. Where uh, she talks about the topmost regret is that I didn't do what I really wanted to do. It's not the Rolls Royce that you didn't have in your garage or it's not the mansion that you didn't build or the holidays that you didn't take. It's that I didn't do what I really wanted to do. And most of the time we are not doing it because, you know, we believe that one, we have a lot of time. Mm -hmm. You heard of that thing? How many days do you have in a week? Seven. No, eight. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. (laughs) Friday, Saturday and Sunday. Sunday. <laughs> so we live with this, with this thing that, you know, someday I'm going to do it. The thing is that someday never comes because we are so comfortable. Mm-hmm. And that happens because mainly because we believe that, you know, nothing is going to change in our life. And we are mm-hmm. very scared of uncertainty. We don't, sure. we want certainty. We want to know that that step that we take out is going to get us the right result. But Sheila, don't you, like I, I see so many people, they're happy in their lives, they're just chilling, going to mall, yeah. they, you know, buying stuff, coming back home, putting their kids to bed, going off to sleep. And they seem quite happy, 
like the isn't world. they do the same thing every day and they seem quite happy. happy the operative word over there is see have you spoken to them to find out whether they are really happy probably not let's i'm going to deflect this entirely back to you mm. geetika you know i i one of the things why we don't get out of our comfort zone is because we want that certainty right and you know how much you strove for certainty throughout <laughs> we were talking about uh, how people seek certainty and uh, when i turned 30 or 26 or something you start reading all these motivational books to get somewhere and they say get out of your comfort zone and uh, awesomeness is that circle with comfort zone and awesomeness is right there and do every thing every day one thing that you fear but problem is this is what i'm learning after 30 but before 30 all i was told was Find a secure job, make a secure life, have a secure SIP, have a secure mutual fund, be in your comfort zone, find a place where you're comfortable, buy a house where you will die comfortably. Yes. And so much irony, and then at thirty you're suddenly like get out of your comfort zone and so on. That is also the most practical thing. I think till thirty, the parents just want you to get somewhere, but it's not practical. It's a conditioning. See. the first decade of your working life let's mm-hmm. say tw- in your 20s to 30s is when you mostly don't have any responsibility mm-hmm. right and the time when we don't have the responsibility is when you have the freedom to try new things True. to set up that business that you always wanted to go backpacking take a gap year and really find what is it that gives you purpose what is it that gives that gives you passion what is it that makes you jump out of bed mm-hmm. and get 20 to 30 we are trying to find a job that will give us a monthly income right instead of and then what happens by the time you're 40 when you have a house you have a mortgage you have two children who need to go to school you suddenly decide that no this is not the life i want to yeah. lead and you chuck your job and you lead mm-hmm. a life of uncertainty i'm saying let's step that on the head 20 to 30 take your chances Yeah, yes. absolutely. That is what your twenties are for, right? Yes, absolutely. All my friends that were looking for certainty, it, at least till twenty twenty, and yes. we all know what happened. The yes. most uncertain thing happened. Yes. So all the while that you're looking for certainty, you're trying to build a safe zone, and then life happens. Life plays life, yes. as I say. Yes. <laughs> you know, pandemic happens. Yeah. So people. the companies are downsizing you're losing your jobs and then you're, you're working, working from home and you're working from home you know the yeah. the funniest part was there were i have seen my brother in law also do this you know he's working from home maybe he doesn't want to hear his name mentioned but maybe he he's working from home and he's on a meeting and the pressure cooker whistles and he says no sound of the pressure cooker why not you're working <laughs> from home it's okay like you said life happens yeah. Lies that we tell ourselves: mm-hmm. I'm not capable enough. I'm not talented enough. This is not the right time. All those excuses and lies that we sit in, and the stories that we have in our head, it is like sitting in bed cement. Because the yeah. longer you sit over there, the harder it is for you to move. So, isn't it funny how you keep sitting over there thinking that it's not the right time, and then when you really want to move, you feel stuck, and you really don't know what to do. You, you used to tell me, you know, you're not. Uh... Born to grow roots, okay? Get the car, and yeah. that's what Louise also very beautifully puts that yes. if you're like willow trees, yes. with all the winds and changes in life, you'll keep uh, molding. But if you're like a rigid bar, yes. you'll bend and break. So you have to stop sitting over that. Because, yeah, of course, there's more to life than just you know, yeah, losing weight, making money, yeah, and procreating. There's a lot more to it. Yeah, but I have to tell you something, Sheila. Like this moment right here, while we are recording this, mm-hmm. this is like my proudest moment yeah. because uh, I have been meaning to do so much with yeah. in this space, mm-hmm. 
and I have been in my comfort zone for last like three years almost, and yeah. I could not do it. Yeah. And now I have literally come out, and I cannot say that it is it is beyond fulfilling Absolutely. to do something and feel so empowered to be able to put your voice out. Yes. I mean, this is my moment of coming out of that whole picture of yeah. comfort zone magic. This is my magic moment. <laughs> Accountability. You need a partner who will yeah, help you. Of course. Of now course. the thing is, um, we don't go out actually actively seeking out coaches mm -hmm. who are accountability partners. Yeah. Like we did. Like I told you in the beginning of the yeah. podcast. If you had not said that you don't have time tomorrow or day after, I would have happily cancelled. <laughs> right. And likewise, if I had not told you, yeah, just. Just come here. Yeah. <laughs> Just come on. Let's let's finish it. Yeah. We would have sat down and we would have this would have gone on. Yes, yes. And I would have really regretted it tonight. Absolutely. Yeah. But Sheila, I have a magic solution to get people out of their comfort zone and right running right to the gym and eating every possible healthy seeds available in the market. Really? You want to say you're going to make me replaceable? Yes. Oh, of course. And your replacement is somebody who comes in a white lab coat in the yes. hospital who tells you that if you don't lose weight right now, you're not going to get out of bed. Yeah. If you don't control your sugar levels now, forget about eating carbs, you won't even be able to smell them. Oh my bread. <laughs> <laughs> but this happened with you also, right? Your yes. sugar levels went so high. Yeah. And then, yeah, the doctor told me that and I was traveling the next day. I was traveling for a retreat mm -hmm. of all things. And my doctor tells me, I can't allow you to go because oh my. you have to be hospitalized right now. Really? Said, yeah. It was I said, No way, I can't. I have to go. You know what? There was a retreat. And it's my retreat. I have to go. He said, No, you can't. And then he put me on a quick dose of medicine and said, if you were in the in the US you would, you would be in the hospital it's because it's India you're getting away with it mm -hmm. but come back after you finish yeah. that come back and that's when I started taking really serious measures mm -hmm. to control my um, sugar level to get into healthy eating mm -hmm. and you know I eat so healthily now now I yes yes I've seen that so yeah. but we don't realize that while we are sitting in our comfort zones the amount of toll it is taking on our mental health and yes. on our physical health yeah. It's it's beyond and we keep ignoring it till the time your body says, listen, not anymore, I can't take it. And Absolutely. it manifests in the form of illness. There's this very beautiful thing I was listening, I've written it down, I would really like to talk about it here. It says that an illness wakes up people to the necessity to get to know themselves, to accept themselves and to love themselves. Without these experiences, people who are so stubborn to uh, learn they would just stumble through life living an alienated existence and they were never going to wake up to know who they really are. Wow. Imagine, so you are just so close to getting out of your comfort zone and getting to know who you really are, what your special powers are. Mm -hmm. Everybody has some. Yeah. And you know, it is such a shame that you don't get to know who you really yeah, are. Yeah, because do you really need fear to drive you? Yeah. And do you really need that kick? to get you started True. then actually you should be jumping out of bed and being led with the anticipation of the joy that fulfillment brings you and that's the beautiful thought we want to leave you with your someday is here oh yeah your someday is at least mine is today <laughs>